All right, it is the first week in April, and this is uh, our orchard at the current season. As you can probably tell, even from here, the apricot is in full bloom. A little past that now, the leaves are, or the um, petals are starting to fall off. Um, so anyway, let's take a look. So for our pear, um, once again, there's not going to be much visible, not many visible changes from for now at the, at that level. Now when we zoom in, get a little closer, we can see our uh, plants, buds are starting to open up. You can see there, you can see individual little leaf parts coming off and the little balls, um, little bulbule looking things are going to be the, you can see a little better here, those are going to be the flower buds, which will be the pears. So there they are there, just starting to open up, still haven't quite got there yet. Um, let's see, oh here we got one that's a little better, you can start to see the individual things. There's. Um, it's hard to point out my here we go so there's a leaf that's going to be a leaf there that's going to be a flower flower leaf that kind of stuff so um probably next week it'll be a lot more distinguishable or easier to identify what's what because it'll pop open um, and interestingly the flowering pair in the front of the house um, is already well past this stage it actually has fully separated and you can actually see the little buds starting to open. It's in like the pink bud stage. So, uh, interesting. I'm guessing mainly because the front of the house is on the west side, or the tree is on the west side of the house, and it's not blocked by the evening, so it gets a lot more of the evening sun. This will get some morning sun, and then it's blocked by the house in the um, early late afternoon. So anyway, that's probably part of the difference, or also because these are different varieties. Anyhow, beside the point, here is our cherry tree. Um, then we'll just take a good look at the structure once again. Until the um, blossoms and start to open and leaves start to furl, you won't really see much different. There's no new growth or anything at this stage. Just starting to do here. Um, the flowers are just the what's getting ready to um, working on popping here. So. What we've got here, you can see these nice fat round buds. Those are going to be our flower buds and they'll eventually be our cherry buds. So right there you can start to see a little bit. So you can see the green for sure and then you can start to see right there it's starting to open. You can see like the, um, instead of this you can see that part and then, then those individual things will swell and get bigger and open. And you can see it probably there. You can see the individual lobes, and that's going to be our flowers. And you can see the difference. Here's a perfect example of this is a leaf bud, and this is a flower bud. Because one's round and fat, and one's longer and skinny and like torpedo shaped. And so all these will be leaves, and this might even become a branch, and those will be the flowers. So. Um, we're still progressing. Here's a good one that's opened up more right there. My pinky's pointing. You can start to see the opening up there and see individual um, little clusters in there. So very cool um, time and that's what's going on with the cherry tree. So we're just getting the buds really getting swollen. Um, still have a few weeks to go before the uh, before they're open. Okay. Now for our apple tree, um, not much moving on it at all. Actually, I couldn't really detect, you know, anything um, as far as the bud stage progression. I think I would just say more um, action. So once again, this is what they call silver tip, pretty much fully closed. This you're barely starting to see the end. We're starting to see more, but that's about as far as they're getting, like half inch green. Where the little leaves are coming out so um, like I said it's happening more and more but the apple tree to review is the last plant to emerge from dormancy and it's also the last um, tree to produce fruit or to actually have this fruit ready to go so it takes a while getting up but it stays open longer so here's our peach tree um, not really much action on the peach. We'll go ahead and look at the overview of the pear as well since they're so close together. Then go back and look at the peach here. We're starting to see 
the swelling. Start to see individual little, um, you can start to see the green in there, just like we did here. You can also see the leaf tips. Let me see if I can get a good one against the background here. So here's some good leaf tip action there. Long furls there, so it's really starting to come. And then there's the buds just swollen up. So once again, leaf buds and fruit buds. So there'll be three um, flowers that open there and then the leaves at the tip. So that is kind of how that works with what's going on there. And if you can see every single little bud here wants to become a peach. Now we can't actually let that happen because the peach tree would not be able to support that and the peach trees, the general rule is they set approximately 10 times the amount of flowers that they will actually be able to hold. So that's why peach trees are known to, uh, are prone to breaking if not to manage properly because if people just let things go then all those peaches will try to develop and it's too much and the tree just can't support it and that's why you end up with broken limbs because it sets so much, um, so many flowers and tries to set so much fruit if you don't go in and thin it. And it's a very tedious process to go in and do that, but um, it has to be done. Because like I said, there would try to be, you know, um, 20 fruit on this particular 12 feet, or 12 inches of plant, and that's not gonna happen. There's no way, uh, just due to engineering, that that's gonna hold 12, um, peaches as, as also that one and that one that one anyway so that's a little side tangent for later but after all the that'll be the the next big event here um, as far as work to do will be the fruit thinning but that won't be for a while yet so this one now this tree is not in the shade of the house so the house ends about right here and so the shadow um, the evening sun since um, this is the wet east here and then the west is behind us so the sun is right now overhead um, that way and it'll come over so because this house ends about here this is does this and the apricot tree do not end up in evening shadow so the peach tree on down gets shaded by the house at a certain point but these don't and that is why I believe that this tree is a little further on um, because it gets more sun and more um, it's warmer so these ones are much more open you see here one's open you can see the individual leaf clusters and the bulb you know clusters there those are going to be the flower buds and those are leaf buds so you can see that a lot um, easily and a lot more readily here that there you go boom no need to prime apart they're all right there here 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 or with our other peach, pe I'm sorry, pear tree, that is the exact same variety, just, you know, a little ways down that way, it is not in the same stage, mainly because of the, I'm guessing because of the difference in sun and temperature. So, anyway, let's back up here for our final fruit tree, which is the monster apricot, and it is in full, full bloom. Um, there's when the wind was blowing earlier, it was producing this very pretty little shower of petals. You can see them all over the ground, but there, uh, there's one now. Very, um, very beautiful when it's in bloom. And obviously, um, as is the rule, each flower would has the potential to become an apricot. And as you can see, uh, there's really no way for me to get all those apricots if they were to develop. Um, because they're 15 feet in the air and some of them are right in the middle of the tree there's no way to it's not big enough to get a ladder in so it, to lean it against it's kind of a, a hassle but that's what we'll be working on for the next few years getting that height down to a manageable level and there's a bunch of bees in there of course with all this uh, delicious nectar there um, but they will be doing their pollinization and hopefully we will see some fruit development um, in a bit here. So as you can see, some of the flowers are, most of the flowers are past full bloom. Um, a lot of them here will have, you can see all these different stages, but some of them here, it's like, okay, I bloomed and now the petals are starting to fall off. Some of them are past that, where literally um, 
all the white petals are gone and just the red petals are remaining there and you've got all the little filaments still left and um, some of them I don't think we're I don't think we have that stage yet where all the eventually all those will fall off um, the reds and stuff too and what will emerge is a little bud which will become or a little nodule which is the ovary the fruit ovary and if it got um, fertilized it will begin to grow and when this actually does come off you'll see a little green um, bump there and that is the fruit so we'll see what happens um, I'm sure that we'll, we never have a problem with them getting fertilized by the bees um, and developing into fruit the problem that we have is just them being um, killed by the frost because the apricot tree is the first to bloom once again as you slowly pan over here no other fruit trees in bloom and it's this past full bloom so because it's the first to bloom it has the greater risk of getting damaged uh, because if there were a hard frost right if it got down to 20 degrees right now um, I just made that number up but if there's a certain threshold that those those tree all those buds would still be fine but these buds here because basically as um, as a rule or actually it is the rule that when the buds are nice and tight and it's still in dormancy they can survive very cold temperatures you know depending on the fruit fruit tree each one of these fruit trees um, except for the two pears because um, they're the same each one of them the apple the cherry the peach the pear and the apricot all have a different temperature scale but the general rule is when the bud's tight and closed and dormant it can survive much lower temperatures and as it starts to open up that temperature that it can survive um, the temperature uh, increases so it, it can't get as cold and obviously when it's a fully open flower it can't survive the same temperatures as it was when it was fully closed because it's more delicate and easier to damage so if it hit 20 degrees it would probably kill all these but it would be fine for all those right now in this particular stage I don't know particularly but anyway the general point is when the flower the further along it is the less temperature um, cold snap it can withstand so this is what happens it blooms first and then it's most likely if we have a cold dip to get damaged so we haven't had any fruit um, actually mature here for several years so hopefully that will change but unfortunately there's not much we can do about it so anyway that is the orchard for this week the first week in april um, we'll hopefully be seeing some continue to see more changes it'll probably be a few more weeks before we see any of the other trees in full bloom but we never know it's supposed to be a bit of warm pop a couple days and we'll just have to see how the weather is that's all for now thanks for watching